Ladies and gentlemen, health and oh, safety, yes, is paramount. And I don't know whether you're wondering why that's there, but health and safety generally irritates me sometimes when I see something like this. When I buy a cup of tea, I expect it to be hot. I don't need a notice saying caution hot. But it is a serious subject. But we've also got to accept life is risky, and so safe is a relative term. Modern cars, take this Fiat 500, it's absolutely stuffed with new technology. You can see ASR, MSR, seven airbags, ESP, and it goes on. It's incredible. And luckily, eventually that technology comes down into our motorhomes. And uh, if any of you have a relatively modern motorhome, you will see you'll, you'll almost certainly have ABS, airbags, and seat belts. I just mentioned a little bit before I go on about airbags because when I was thinking about safety it did worry me that I've got uh, a standard motorhome but it's on a commercial white van chassis base uh, and I've only got an airbag for the driver's side and I don't know if I've ever mentioned that to my wife but she'd only worry about it if I told her so I looked on the website of the Department of Transport and it's interesting they're suggesting that the benefits to passengers may be more limited and the driver is more at risk because he's close proximity to the steering wheel. So it's interesting, even a safety feature like that, you've got to know about it. So do read your handbook about the airbags you have in your vehicle and never attach or place anything near the airbag. Like on the passenger side, if, you've got a, if you ever put a sat-nav there uh, over where the airbag is, you're in a crash. You likely end up with Tom Tom stamped on the passenger's chest. You know? so, just be careful. Right, let's have a look at safety data from the Department of Transport. And this is actually not for just motorhomes, it's all road users. And you can see, uh, since the Second World War, deaths have actually dramatically gone down. Um, and that's despite increase in population and um, car ownership. So that looks good, but we mustn't be complacent because when you look at the detail, there's still nearly 2,000 people killed each year on the roads. And with all the injuries, that's nearly 200,000 people that are affected each year. Europe is taking more and more interest in safety. And you see the most dangerous places to uh, drive, it would seem, is Eastern Europe and Greece. Now, there may be many reasons there, cultural reasons, older vehicles, and probably poorer infrastructure. Things that make travel safer, you should modify your driver behaviour. Consider the design and the fitness of your vehicle. Looking after your tyres. Don't overload and use seat belts at all times. They are some of the, the key things that come out in, in uh, statistics. They reckon that if everyone wore seat belts, respected speed limits, didn't drink and drive, we could save 12,000 lives on European roads. That's, that's, that's quite something. Mobile phones, I hope we're all getting the message now. If you're on a mobile phone, that can cause real problems. You can't do both. And that's your reaction time is 50% slower. Fatigue, that can be a real problem. And drugs and drink, well, I've already mentioned that. And of course, speeding comes into 30% of accidents. More EU statistics, they looked at vehicles and um, matters that are relevant to accidents, blind spots on mirrors. A lot of us have got Peugeot and Fiat uh, cabs, and at least we're, we're lucky we've got good mirrors. There's two mirrors on each side, and you can adjust those generally to avoid or absolutely minimize blind spots. So that's worth doing. Securing cargo, abnormal loads, well, that's obviously to a certain extent commercial vehicles, but it relates to us as well. The tin of baked beans, if you keep them at the back high up, if you come to a full stop, a tin of baked beans flying down hits you on the back of the head when you're driving, I think you might know about it. And I think Philippa might tell us a bit later about flying fridges. 
daytime running lights, so that's something that's just been introduced in cars and is coming into motorhomes. E-safety, again, we talked about ESP and, and many other electronic aids, and again, gradually they're coming into motorhomes. You should always have an annual service, and don't just do the cheapest service, make sure you follow the manufacturer's uh, recommendations, things like changing the brake fluid every two or three years, brake fluid absorbs moisture and will reduce the effectiveness of your braking. So follow the manufacturer's schedule. If you use gas in the habitation area when you're for heating as you go along, make sure you've got uh, a system that's designed for on the road. Truma have a SecuMotion regulator which will cut off the supply in the event of an accident and rupture hose uh, systems. Uh, and it's good um, practice to have a habitation service as well because you want to be safe when you're static as well as traveling. Tires are so important Again, surveys reckon that defective and uninflated, underinflated tyres contributed to more than 1,200 road casualties in Great Britain in 2010. So, tyres are the only contact you have with the roads. Important you look after them. Um, this character is Mr. McIntyre, who works for Tire Safe, and Tire Safe is uh, an organisation, industry organisation, that. Um, encourages safety with tyres and they've got an excellent um, website and I urge you to have a look at it. They will also mention about camping tyres. Um, if possible, have a camping tyre on your motorhome because tyres really work extra hard. They have to work extra hard on motorhomes because your motorhome is virtually fully loaded all the time, whereas white van man sometimes he's driving empty, half empty. This is the tyre safety document that's on the Tire Safe website. Um, it's a terrific um, document. You've got the different tyres and pressures with different loading, so you can get the right pressure. So there's no excuse there. You can get tyre monitoring, and in fact, um, it's becoming going to become mandatory for cars in 2014, and eventually, I guess, it'll come to motorhomes. Uh, but it's not actually essential. The important thing is every time you, you go off on a big journey, check your tyre pressures. Correct valves are important. A lot of motorhomes will run at uh, tyres will run at 60 psi or more, uh, and at that sort of pressure, the usual requirement is for a metal bolt-in valve. So if you go for a new tyre, make sure they don't just put you a standard car rubber valve in. Check your tyres regularly. Um, your motorhome, as we said, works. The tyres have to work hard. It's nearly always loaded because it's got fridges, kitchens, toilets, everything else in. Um, and they're outside all the time and they're static a lot of the time. All factors which cause tyres to deteriorate more rapidly. And you probably don't do as many miles as in your car, so you won't lose the tread, you won't become illegal, but they will deteriorate. And the recommendation is to change after five to seven years and every tyre will have anything make out just point just there there's a four digit uh, number on tyres and that what says 3611 which means that tyre was made in week 36 2011 so from your tyre you can see uh, how, lot, how old they are. Police checks show that a lot of motorhomes do overload um, and for good reason in the sense that manufacturers payload um, allowances are often not realistic and overloading risks straining components, brakes and suspension. So do check overloading, uh, not just for your gross vehicle weight but also if you put bikes and the like on the back you can overload your rear axle and uh, even end up like that perhaps. So go to a uh, Weybridge get yourself weighed up and the axles, see you within your payload. You can use a, a, a right uh, weight control unit just to do individual tyres, that'll give you a reasonable idea. Seat belts are the easiest and cheapest way to avoid injury in a crash. And since 2006, wearing seat belts has been compulsory in vehicles throughout the EU. If you've got a seat belt fitted, you have to wear it. Since October 2007, 
manufacturers are not allowed to uh, provide motorhomes with travelling seats that are not forward facing or rearward facing. So now they're not allowed to put seat belts on a side facing seat. Uh, research has shown that um, you can actually get injuries from the seat belt uh, on a side facing seat. They are designed to operate rearward on rearward facing and forward facing seats. There are various ways where I could say to you, yes, if your motorhome was built without seat belts in the back, you can still carry passengers in the back. There is various legislation we could talk about, but the main thing is you don't want to do that. So summary, there's much you can do to improve safety, your behavior, looking after your unit, how you load your vehicle, looking after your tires, always use seat belts. I can't emphasize that enough, but when you're purchasing, be discriminating. Uh, think safety, look at have you got sufficient payload so you don't end up being pushed into overloading, have you got enough forward or rearward facing travelling seats for all the people you want to take out in your motorhome. And I think that is it, so thank you very much.